A fetal pig is a great model organism to study in a high school or college anatomy class because like humans, pigs are mammals, so many of the organ systems inside its body will look similar to human organ systems and also function similarly to human organ systems. Let's start by reviewing some of our basic anatomy directional terms. Remember, directional terms are terms that we use specifically in anatomy to identify where structures are located within a body. We don't use words like up, down, straight, backwards in anatomy. We use terms like anterior and posterior. So let's start with anterior and posterior. Anterior is a directional term that means in front. So we could say that the eye is anterior to the ear. We could say that the arm is anterior to the leg. And if I drew an imaginary line down our pig right here, we could say that this is the anterior end, meaning it is closer to the head or in front. The directional term posterior is the opposite of anterior, so that means behind or towards the tail of the pig. So I could say that the tail is posterior to the leg. I could say that the ear is posterior to the eye or the snout. But again, if I drew my imaginary line right here, we're going to say that everything that is behind that line is the posterior side of the pig. Dorsal is a term that we use to refer to anything that runs along or near the backbone, and the opposite of dorsal is ventral, and ventral is along the belly. Many of the organs that we're going to see inside the pig we will find by a ventral view. The last directional term you need to know are the terms medial, which means along the midline of the pig. So the chin is medial, the tongue is medial, the sternum is medial, the umbilical cord is medial, um, all of these structures, the tail are medial, and the opposite of medial is lateral. And lateral means out to the side. So if something is closer to the midline, we say it is medial. And if something is further out towards the sides, we say that it is lateral. So the arms are lateral compared to the sternum. The next set of terms you should be familiar with are body cavities. Body cavities are spaces inside a body that hold specific organs. So three body cavities to know. The space that holds the brain that we really can't see from this ventral view is the cranial cavity. So the brain is inside the cranium or the cranial cavity. From around the neck down to the bottom of the arms, we have what we call the chest cavity or the thoracic cavity. So this is the cavity that will hold the heart and the lungs and the thymus and the thyroid gland and a lot of the major blood vessels. And then below this line and down towards the bottom of our pig, we are going to generally call this region the abdominal cavity. The abdominal cavity holds the digestive organs and it holds the spleen, it holds the liver, it holds the intestines, and we'll see all of those organs once we look inside the abdominal cavity. Now once we look into Internally, we're actually going to see a physical wall between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity, and that physical wall will be a sheet of skeletal muscle known as the diaphragm. So the diaphragm separates the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity. Now remember, these are fetal pigs, which means they were harvested when they were fetuses. They hadn't been born yet. A typical pig pregnancy is 114 days, and we can actually measure the length of our fetal pig to determine how many days its mother had been pregnant with it and how close that mother was to giving birth to the pig. In order to determine their gestational age, you'll take a string and you will measure from the tip of the snout along the back of the pig, all the way to the base of the tail, not the tip of the tail. You'll then take that string and compare it to a ruler, a string that is over 14 inches, which mine is definitely well over 14 inches, indicates that the pig that you're working with was somewhere between 110 to 115 days gestational age, which means that this pig would have been very shortly, been born very shortly, had it not been harvested. Let's take a look at the external anatomy of the pig. So our pigs at the most anterior portion of their body have a snout 
and that snout has two nares or nostrils. You can see the tongue, and the tongue is covered with taste buds. Fun fact for you, pigs on average have 19,000 taste buds, whereas humans on average only have 9,000. So they've got us beat when it comes to taste buds. The ears of the pig are called pinna. And then if we look at the ventral view of our pig, we'll see a few more structures. Externally on the ventral surface, you can see teats or nipples. And if your first response when you see nipples is to assume that this is a fetal, a female fetal pig, please remember that both male and female humans typically have nipples. So nipples aren't going to give us a good indication of whether this pig is male or female. In a female pig, these teats or nipples would go on to develop mammary glands. You can also see the umbilical cord right here. It's a cord that is filled with blood vessels that deliver blood to and from the fetal pig from the placenta. When the fetal pig needs nutrients or oxygen, that nutrient or oxygen intake doesn't come from its own mouth or lungs. It comes from the mother's intake. And so she's able to deliver those nutrients and oxygen to the fetus through the umbilical cord. And when the fetus creates waste products like CO2, that CO2 comes back up the umbilical cord and gets delivered to the placenta so that the mother can deal with the waste of the fetal pig. Another structure that you will see is going to be our indicator of the sex of the fetal pig is what's called the urogenital opening. Pigs have a shared opening for their urinary system and their reproductive system. And that opening is called the urogenital opening. Both male and female pigs have a urogenital opening. The way you can differentiate between the two sexes of pigs is by where that urogenital opening is located. So in a male fetal pig, the urogenital opening is right behind the umbilical cord. And if you look carefully, you'll see an opening right here. This is the structure we're talking about right now. This is the urogenital opening. So this is the opening for the urinary system. The male fetal pig would pee through this. Inside this opening, especially as this fetal pig matures, there's also a penis located on the inside. So this is the uro urine genital reproductive structure openings. And again, in male fetal pigs, right behind the umbilical cord. In female fetal pigs, which is not what I'm looking at right now, the urogenital opening would be closer down here towards the anus of the fetal pig. Because my fetal pig was so close to birth and is so mature, we also can see a dead giveaway as to what his sex is when we look between the legs and you can actually see his scrotum right here. A scrotum is the sack of skin that holds the testes. So inside the scrotum, you can even see a line splitting it down the middle. There are two testes inside our male pig. If you've ever heard the phrase sweating like a pig before, you might think twice before saying it yourself in the future. Pigs do have sweat glands or sudoriferous glands as we call them in anatomy, but they don't have a lot of them. So their sweat glands don't really have a functional purpose. They can't use them to cool their body down like humans do when our sweat evaporates from our body and takes the heat with us. But just know in the integument, in the outer covering of this pig, there are a small number of sudoriferous or sweat glands. Another part of the integument that I want you to notice is the presence of hair. Pigs are mammals, and one of the telltale features of mammals is the presence of hair or fur. And you can see this little pig had quite a lot of the stuff. There's a lot around the eyes. There's a big orangish colored patch right here towards the posterior ends, a lot on the arms and the legs. And pig hair does have a similar structure to human hair where we can see the shaft on the outside. If I were to pluck one of these hairs, we would see that there is a root on the inside and then each hair grows out of a single hair follicle or tunnel in the pig's skin that the root is embedded within that the hair grows out of. Pigs have similar muscles to humans. So inside the leg and the rest of the muscles in our pig's body, 
The muscle names are even the same names that you would see in human muscles. For example, the pig is going to have quadriceps muscles, four of those up here that have similar names to those in a human, and they're going to have hamstring muscles back here in the back of the leg, again, with similar names to those in people. Now, we are going to find one of the bigger muscles in a pig, and honestly, in a lot of specimens that walk on four legs, that's one of the hamstring muscles, and it's known as the biceps Morris. So we are going to try and cut the skin so that we can see this specific biceps femoris muscle. This point you're going to want to use your scalpel and you are going to want to carefully use the scalpel and I'm going to try and make like a triangular cut total to peel the skin back off the leg muscles. Now I don't want to cut super deep so I'm really like testing the waters here. I want to see how deep is this skin before I go crazy. Okay, and now I can see, okay, it's like right around there. Make a very consistent cut just in the skin. I can always go back and cut more later along the ridge of the leg, down towards the ankle. And it's not a huge deal if you cut some of the muscle, but it'll just be neater to see the muscles intact. And then I'm gonna go to this side of the leg this is where the biceps femoris is, so I want to be really careful here. But again, if you cut some muscle, which it looks like I did in that softer part there, it's not a big deal. Down towards here, and then I'm going to make a cut going across. And that one definitely went too deep. It's interesting, there's some parts where it feels really hard, like right here, to cut. Like I didn't even get through that skin right there. And then there's other parts where it's really easy and the muscle is superficial. All right, now we're gonna try and pull this open like a window. So I'm gonna grab the skin where it lifts. I can get some lift right here. There's connective tissue holding the skin down to the muscle. And I'm going to do a technique that we call in my anatomy class, the push pull, where I'm pulling up on the skin but I'm pushing down on all the important structures beneath the skin so that I'm not damaging the muscle. I'm just kind of tearing the connective tissue. And let's use scissors to cut that right there. Okay, push pull it. Definitely went way too deep with the scalpel there. Push pull, push pull, and if I can even get this to lift, I might push pull a bit more on the back of the leg. All right, so this is muscle here. And it's kind of hard to see the delineation between the different muscles and we don't need to for the sake of the point of the dissection that we're doing today. The point is that you can see muscle. So muscle, you're always gonna see that it has a fibrous-like appearance, and that's because we know that muscle is made of millions of little skeletal muscle fibers. That's what I'm seeing here. Now this specific muscle, the biceps femoris in the leg, it attaches down here, and it attaches back here. So what's cool is Muscles contract and relax, and muscles attach to bone via tendon. When our muscle contracts and relaxes, the muscle pulls the tendon, which then pulls the bone. So if the biceps femoris, you can see it happening already, contracts, I'm just pulling that muscle, it causes the lower leg to move. And when it relaxes, it causes it to return to its original position. So muscles contract, pull on tendons, which then pull on bones. If you would like you are welcome to go a little bit deeper in the leg. We're not gonna be doing anything else in the leg and see if you can find the femur up here. There's also a tibia down here that you'll be able to find because they've got, again, similar bone structure to people with their musculoskeletal system.